Okay. Hi, this is Jennifer Longdon, blogger with Paralysis.org, the Christopher and Dana Reed Foundation, and with me today is one of my favorite people, Teal Sh Teal Shearer. <laughs> Teal, hi. Hi, I'm so happy to be here, Jennifer. Thank you. Oh, I'm happy to have you here, a star of My Gimpy Life, actress. You've got so many film credits, we're going to have to talk about all of those. But the first thing I see right behind you there is that license plate that says Teal. Yes. Um, my dad used to have that on his car uh, oh, yeah? when I was born, so it's pretty sweet. Uh, and we lived in Rhode Island at the time, so I just think it's cool because it says Rhode Island and... Um, Kind of a vintage license plate. So uh, before you were born, your dad had a thing for teal. Yes, my dad was a duck hunter, and there is a kind of duck called teal, and it actually has a teal-colored feather. So he always wanted to name a daughter if he had a daughter teal. So uh, oh, awesome! Yeah, so we always make the joke that uh, he named me after an animal that he enjoyed killing, which is so sweet. <laughs> Very sweet. And so your sense of humor and sense of irony seems to have been inborn. Definitely. I, I definitely did get that from my parents, for sure. Wow. Awesome. So, Teal, um, I want to talk about Mike MP Life, but tell me, um, how long have you been acting? Tell me about some of your film credits. And, oh, first I want to tell you, I need to thank you for giving me hipster credit. Uh, one day when I was preparing to do this, I had uh, your picture up on my computer screen, and my um, uh, son came by, and he goes, Hey, Mom, why do you have Venom up on your screen? <laughs> Thank I you so that. much. Aww. Thank you so much for that. So tell me about some of your uh, previous acting things before we get to my Gimpy Life. Tell me about some of your previous acting credits. Yeah, I started acting in college. I had to take a theater class as part of my communications major, and... Uh -huh fell in love. My professor was amazing. He cast me in my first play, The House of Bernarda Alba, and I played a character that wasn't even written to have a disability. And uh, so I, from that point forward, I was in love and just started doing theater nonstop. And if I wasn't acting in a play, I also liked working behind the scenes, stage managing, working box office. And during that time, I also started dancing with a, an integrated dance company in Atlanta called Full Radius Dance that combines both dancers with and without disabilities. So I feel like all through college I was dancing or I was working, you know, in the theater department. And uh, that's, yeah, what I've been doing ever since. Awesome. So um, it sounds like your background's completely prepared to do My Gimpy Life. And it sounds also to me as though you've been advocating for inclusion and um, and integration since your first acting it, gig. Definitely. I think it just naturally, yeah, happened. It's not like I, I necessarily set out, but I think when you're disabled and then especially when you, you start acting and maybe, you know, playing a role that wasn't written for a person with a disability, it naturally just starts, starts happening. You don't realize that it is. And, um, yeah, it's not, I think it's just a natural part of, who I am and what I do. So I'm going to give you another confession. Yeah. Uh, when I first heard about my Gimpy Life, when it was in, when the first season was in pre-production and mm -hmm. you were starting to get the word out, I was a little skeptical. Yeah. I didn't, uh, I wasn't sure that I was going to like the tone. Yeah. And oh my gosh, from like the first 30 seconds of the first episode, I've been sold. I tell everyone about your show. I love how you integrate humor and everyday life with this quiet advocacy. And you manage to, um, to share an issue that we all have with all these laughs. And it makes it so much easier to get our able allies to, um, to hear the message and the way you do it. So do you start off with an issue that you want to tackle for an episode, or how do you how do you get there? Yeah, so the first thing is I brought a writer on board. His name uh -huh. is Gabe Yor, and he's my producing partner, and he writes my the My Gimpy Life writes My Gimpy Life. And because I'm not I'm not a writer. So we sit down together and I kind of just told him about my life and the funny, funny stories of things that have happened to me that I thought would be interesting in a show. 
And so we explore all those first, but then we have to kind of flush them out and create a story around them, bring in other characters and you know other storylines as well as well. So it's been a really fun process because it's definitely a mix of my real life experiences and things that I'd like to explore as well as Gabe and his his um, I mean amazing writing skills and his he has such a great comedic uh, uh, background. So it's those kind of mixed together. Uh, so and he and it's it is crazy because he doesn't get a lot of credit. I am the one who usually gets all the credit for the show, and a lot of people think that I write the show. So he's uh, he definitely deserves more credit than than he gets because the show is very much I think ours, and not just mine. Well, shout out to Gabe then for doing yeah. some excellent work. Um, to to be able to write so authentically, uh, I really enjoy a lot and. So that takes me to my next pet peeve. Boy, I'm full of them this morning, aren't I? <laughs> um, Teal, as a working actress, how do you feel about this current um, issue that's being talked about uh, with Blair Underwood, an able-bodied actor, taking on the role of a paraplegic in a series? Um, do you feel there's enough roles for individuals with disabilities in TV and film? And, and what's your take on this? Oh, it's a very complicated subject. Uh, it first of all, it d does not surprise me. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's about money, and Blair Underwood is a name, and he helps sell the project. So I understand why they cast him. Regarding, do I think able-bodied actors should play disabled parts? It, it's hard because as a disabled actress, I'd like to play able-bodied parts. So therefore. If I'm telling an able-bodied actor they can't play disabled parts, can they, can they then say, well, you're disabled, you can only play disabled characters, you can't play an able-bodied part. So it's very, it's very complicated. I think, you know, if, if, people, if actors with disabilities were working more and seen more, it wouldn't be an issue. You know, maybe I play an able-bodied teacher character role and then maybe a disabled actor could play, uh, I mean, able-bodied actor could play a disabled part. I think it's, uh, it's very it's 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 hard, and I I think one of the frustrating things is just not getting the opportunity to audition and at least get seen and to get you know uh, the same opportunity uh, like the opportunity you deserve. I mean, just because you're disabled doesn't mean you're entitled to anything. You still have to get into the audition room and nail the audition, and and it's not always about sometimes necessarily being the best actor. It's about type and what not. So, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question at all. I think it's very complicated um, and complex and, uh, yeah. Well, I think that we should all start a writing campaign demanding that Blair Underwood gets a uh, spunky, wise-cracking blonde sidekick I, who uh, keeps them on the straight and narrow. Yeah, I, I liked your point, though, that you brought up in your article on the Reef Foundation blog. How about if Blair Underwood is going to play a character with a disability that he then needs to respect, <laughs> you know, people with disabilities, and uh, he... I think cracked that joke on the Today Show uh, about um, you know it was it his child making fun like it was embarrassing he was embarrassing his child by being in the wheelchair uh, right, was that what yeah. it was yeah yeah so it, it was, was something like, like that. it's not embarrassing like don't it's not embarrassing to be in a wheelchair and it's not you know mm -hmm. don't make a joke about it if you're going to play a character with a disability and that's the point of the show like that's the that's the selling part of the show. Ironside, like you gotta respect it and and kind of I feel like then be a be a voice for that, be a voice of that. Right. Yeah, my point is that um, by taking on the role, he also needs to take on stewardship, in, in my personal opinion, Definitely. of of this whole message around who people with spinal cord injuries are, what our lives are like. You know, I want to see him hail a cab in New York yeah. City. Um, in his wheelchair. It's yeah, it's not easy. I've been in New York City trying to help cabs, and I, you, you just feel like they're passing you by because they don't want to deal with you. They're like, oh, oh yeah, I can't deal with her totally. freaking wheelchair. I'm probably gonna have to, you know, carry her in the car, whatever. And it's just like, no, it's not that difficult. Um, I mean, something I also, I also, I want to say is acting in general is just a freaking tough business. It doesn't make it matter if you're disabled or if you're able-bodied. I have a lot of able-bodied friends who are actors, and 
it's difficult for them to. So I've always tried to see my disability as an advantage. It makes me different. It makes me unique. There's a million blonde-haired actresses in Hollywood, and you know maybe this gives me a little bit of an edge, a little uh, you know something different. And a lot of the roles I have booked have been because I am disabled. The Liberty Mutual election commercial, they wanted a girl in a wheelchair. Oh I my booked, gosh, that was you! That was I me. And they, that. I love that commercial. Thank you, but that was because I was in a wheelchair. Like they, they wanted that. And I booked a NBC pilot called I'm With Stupid, and I booked that because they wanted a girl in a wheelchair. Um, I'm in a Cars Land, Disneyland commercial right now, and the reason I booked that is because they wanted a girl in a wheelchair. And what's funny is they ended up putting me out of my wheelchair into one of the rides in the commercial, so I'm actually in a ride at um, Disneyland or California Adventure. Mm -hmm. And so in the commercial, you don't even see my wheelchair. I'm in a ride. I look like I'm not. I mean, I, I don't look like, um, you know, I'm disabled. So... Uh, a lot of the things I, when I look back at the things, Venom on the Guild, you know, like right. that character, she's very much, you know, talk uses her disability to her advantage and to be evil and whatnot. So I, for me, I see it as a like this isn't a bad thing. This isn't holding me back. This is actually, I feel like, um, you know, positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And when we last saw Teal in My Gimpy Life, yes. she had booked work, and you were doing Battle with a Soap Monster. Yes. So what could, what do we have to look forward to in Season 2? <laughs> you have any sneak peeks for us? Yeah, we're going to explore what my day job is. Like, how do I make money when I'm not acting? We'll see more of Brian. He was the guy I went on the blind date with in Episode 4, Crowded. He's a hottie. Yes, so we'll see more of him. And then there'll be definitely some more hollywood acting stuff going on as well. So I don't want to give away too much. Awesome. So when you and I were setting this up, one of the things you said is, Jen, we my schedule's really tight. I am currently booking production crew and, and all of that other stuff that you were saying that um, lets me know that you are well underway. When can we expect to see episode one of season two? Do you have a, a ETA for us, Teal? I don't. We're looking to start filming in a couple months, potentially early October. That's what it's looking like right now, but things may change, so don't hold me to that. And so we'll just have to see, because then we're running into like editing and stuff during the holiday season, and is it good to release during the holiday season? I don't know. We'll have to look at that. So I'm not sure yet, but we're definitely in pre-production right now. Uh, we have a, Gabe has written a really wonderful script. I'm really excited about it. And this season is really special because our fans funded it. You know, we raised the money to do this season through Kickstarter, and um, it's very special. Uh, two guys in particular gave a third of the money, uh, Stephen Dangler and Russell Winkler, who will be our executive producers, and Stephen Dangler and his company Draco, Dracogen are the ones who funded, uh, sponsored season one. So it's really cool to have them back. And so I'm just excited to... To you know, shoot everything and then be able to share it with the people who funded it for us. That's great, and yeah, I'm really, um, I was really pleased to see that your Kickstarter was successful. Actually, as I recall, you end up a little bit overfunded, so there's going to yes. be some bonus footage for your fans. Yeah, we're going to do uh, an animated, uh, a little animated video of some sort. I'm not sure exactly what that is yet. I have have an idea. But we'll see. It will kind of be in the same, something probably kind of similar to the Charlie Brown Christmas special we did. That was great. Okay. I really enjoyed that. All right, Teal. So you're not giving anything away, and that's a little disappointing. And you're telling me that we're going to have to wait until Christmas or so we'll for our first yeah, episode. But it will be here soon. And you don't want me to give you too much because you want to be, I mean, you want to not know, I mean, you want to be surprised when you watch it. All right, so you going to keep us updated on your YouTube channel and on your Facebook page? Definitely. Awesome. Well, Teal Shearer, thank you for taking time to speak with me today. We're looking forward to the first episode of Season 2 of Mike Empey Life coming up probably after the first of the year. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Teal. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.